Hi kids, I'm here with you today to celebrate Tide Pool Week and to read to you my book, Catastrophe by the Sea. I wrote it with a wonderful master illustrator, Ed Young, and I'm going to show you a few things before we start. Number one, this is the illustrator of the book, Ed Young, and me and the designer of the book, Allison. We got together at the Seattle Aquarium about a year or two ago and we dreamed up this wonderful book on tide pool creatures and a lost cat. When someone read my book, they sent me this wonderful cat, so we'll start with that. But this book is really based on a real cat who came into my life named Loki. And I'll just set this right here to remind you of who inspired this book. There you go. And also, I'll show you his brother who's sleeping right above this video. But I want to show you first some of the original sketches that Ed Young did for this book. Some of you may be thinking about writing your own book someday, and if you do, you'll do sketches like this one. This was one of the first sketches that Ed Young did of Loki. And here's another one where you see Loki just about ready to pounce. I love these beautiful sketches. And when we got together, Ed Young and Allison and I and our editor, we got to meet, they got to meet my beloved cat, Loki, who was the inspiration for this book. And he is always a part of it. And he was with me for 16 years, and he's still very much a part of this book. His brother, Dow, who's right above me right here, I'm going to move the computer and show you Dow, who's part of this. Dow! Dowie! There you are. We're talking about your brother. So, Dow is listening to this as you're listening to this, and I am going to read this book for you. And I hope that you'll learn a lot about tide pool creatures and my beautiful cat who got lost on the beach. And that inspired this book. Pay attention to the end papers, which are really fun. Even if you look at them here, you can see that there are all sorts of tide pool creatures in this beautiful illustration. Can you see them? There's birds, there's sand dollars, <clears throat> There's an octopus in there someplace. It's one of the great fun parts of this book is discovering all the sea creatures hidden in this beautiful art. So let's start. Catastrophe by the Sea by Brenda Peterson and Ed Young. This is the opening page. And I'm just going to read it to you as we go along. So here's the first spread. A cat called Catastrophe prowls over driftwood, <clears throat> splashes through tide pools, disturbs hermit crabs and sculpin fish whose scaly gills flutter in fear. His whole world now is the beach at low tide. An oyster catcher whistles a warning. Have any of you ever heard an oyster catcher? They have a very loud whistle. Some of you might hear it when you're out on the beach, and a, and a naturalist will show you. Catastrophe has wandered too far from home. Now he is lost and misses his family. Who will play with me here, he wonders. Not the octopus who jets and squirts an inky cloud at the intruder. She squeezes under a rocky ledge, her three hearts drumming. Do you see the cat shadow there and the octopus? Did you know that octopus have three hearts and brains on every single one of their arms? So very smart, the octopus. When catastrophe paws at a sea anemone, the green sea flower shoots salty spray smack into his face. Catastrophe leaps back and cleans his fur with a furious lick. I thought you were dead, he says. I'm 
just alive as you are. The anemone spouts. Catastrophe touches the anemone's rubbery barnacles, but they sting him. Do you see those rubbery barnacles right there? That's the way the anemone feeds at high tide, and it's also the way they protect themselves by stinging anybody who messes with them. In the cold, shallow seawater, hundred-year-old anemones wave their tentacles. Do you see those beautiful tentacles? I love this particular art. If we get lonely, we make twins of ourselves, they sing. The cat decides not to attack. These are the first friends and the first creatures he's found on the beach. Just call me Catastrophe, he purrs. And you can call me Naomi, she says, with a smile like a rosy bloom. A kind welcome feels good to the cat, who is no longer alone on the beach. You're rarely alone on the beach, even if you're by yourself. There are so many animals all around. There are starfish, there are eagles, there are great blue herons, and there are tide pool creatures. Here's a barnacle. I'm Buddy, a barnacle pipes in. He cl clicks open his shell, and other barnacles around rattle and clap like castanets. Do you know what castanets sound like? It's a percussion instrument that they use in bands. I want to let you hear what they sound like. And that's Cha-cha-cha, cha-cha-cha, cha-cha crabs. And here comes cha-cha music. Cha-cha-cha. Cha-cha-cha. So that's what it sounds like when the cha-cha crabs come in. And here's one of my favorite illustrations, the cha-cha crabs. So they come in and they're singing cha-cha-cha. And the sand dollars samba in the shallow waves. Catastrophe greets the tide pool band with a twirl of his own. You should take your show on the road, Catastrophe tells Buddy. You could be rock stars. We're already rock stars, Buddy says. Hey, dude, we're stuck to these rocks with the world's strongest glue. That's what barnacles do. They make glue and they stick it on top of their heads and they attach to the rock they choose for their home for their whole life long. That's the world's strongest glue. Now we move on. You mean you never leave the beach once you settle down on the rocks, Catastrophe asks. Buddy says, as a little larva, I traveled the deep ocean. Some of my cousins attached to a gray whale and still sail the sea. You see that beautiful gray whale? But I caught the scent of other barnacles and found them here on our beach. I molded this shell around my body to keep me snug and safe. You see the cat here? Buddy's barnacle band sings. Oh, the sailor's sea takes good care of me. At high tide, we can all feed for free. At low tide, we hide from the sun. In tide pools, we have lots of fun. Out of nowhere, a big wave splashes over the tide pool. <sharp inhale> An undertow sucks catastrophe inside. He spins and somersaults. Now, I want to tell you a true story. When I was two years old, and I first saw the, Atlantic, the Pacific Ocean. I ran straight into the waves, and I got caught in an undertow. <coughs> Just thinking about it makes me feel like I'm swallowing water. I spun and spun and spun and somersaulted, just like catastrophe. And I almost drowned, and I was scared. But then I heard dolphins. Ah, they sound like underwater. And I heard snapping shrimp. And I knew I wasn't alone. And pretty soon, the waves tossed me back on the shore. 
My family was very happy to see me again, and I didn't drown. But I remember it, and I've never been afraid of the ocean <coughs> after that, because the ocean, like the Salish Sea, took good care of me. So when catastrophe is in the surf, he's swirling. I love this. Look at that surf, that brilliant blue surf. And he's, he's tossed around and he sees plankton and the surging water. What happens? What happens to catastrophe? Well, just like me, the waves toss him back on the beach. And he climbs up onto the barnacles and the rocks. And he looks around and he calls out, meow to all the sea creatures and the tide pool creatures who have become his friends, but there is no answer. Why? Because it's high tide, and they're all underwater, feeding with their little tentacles, and they're opening up like the sea anemones with their rosy blossoms, and they're feeding. But Catastrophe doesn't know that. He thinks they might be drowned, like he almost drowned, and he's looking around, but there is no sight of his tide pool creature friends. So again, catastrophe is lonely on the beach and there's no one to play with. And he really, really misses everyone and it's getting dark and it's still high tide. So that night he has to sleep alone on the rocks. He has no family, human family who have found him. His tide pool creatures are underwater and he can't see them, and he doesn't know if he'll ever see them again. This is a very sad night for him. All of us know what it's like to be lonely. All of us know what it's like at night to be scared. And that's what happened to Catastrophe that long night. But the next morning, when the tide is low, all the tide pool creatures come out again. And this is my favorite spread of all, Catastrophe hears the clicking castanets. He hears the barnacle bag band. Oh, the sailor's sea takes good care of me, sings Buddy. And he calls out to Naomi, Naomi, and she calls back, Catastrophe. They're all out again at low tide. Catastrophe is so excited, he runs around. He runs back to the tide pool creatures and he says, I'm so glad to see you again. My friends, I'll never be lonely when I'm on the beach with my tide pool friends. But then, all of a sudden, there's a big loud sound. Bam, 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 bam. Sneakers on the sand. Suddenly, you see that big sneaker? That's what it looks like if you're a tide pool creature or a cat. The sneakers on the sand, racing each other. Two children crunch the barnacles. That's Buddy the barnacle, they're crunching. Their feet squish, see anemones, like Naomi. She cries out, ouch, ouch, gentle touch, ouch. Run, catastrophe, Buddy shouts before he shuts up his shell. The cat scoots across the warm beach. He slips on slimy algae, skitters on sea lettuce, running away from the kids. They look pretty scary. And they aren't watching where they're walking. They're running on the beach. When the boy grabs him, catastrophe closes his eyes. He knows what's coming next. Catastrophe recognizes bullies on the beach. Catastrophe used to be a bully. Hey, a girl says, you're that cat on all the last lost cat posters. The boy grins, your people really miss you. <sighs> Catastrophe relaxes and lets the children hold him closer and pet his salty fur. Come on, the girl says. Tide's coming in again. And cats, they don't really belong on the beach. Let's take you home. And so Catastrophe is a lost cat who is found by the children on the beach. 
catastrophe meows, meows to the children. Meow! Watch out for my friends in their tide pools. The children seem to understand catastrophe. Now they tiptoe carefully around Buddy and his barnacles. They're very careful if they touch Naomi, the sea anemone, with a gentle touch. They stop to watch Naomi's garden blooming. As Catastrophe is carried home, he hears Buddy's barnacle band sing goodbye to him. And they sing to him, Oh, the Salish Sea, take good care of me. And Catastrophe sings along, Oh, the Salish Sea takes good care of me. And that's the story of Catastrophe, my lost cat in real life, who went onto the beach and learned all about tide pool creatures. And the cat in this story, based on my cat, is here to teach you all how to be careful on the beach because it's not just ours. It belongs to the tide pool creatures and we can share the shore with them because we need them to keep a healthy ecosystem. So I'll see you next time. And thanks for listening. And thanks and looking forward to hearing your stories about being on the beach at low tide and tide pool creatures you'll discover there. Bye kids.